Welcome to Sculpture Studios, our final project video of 2023, where we're creating a giant lighter for BIC, commissioned by a company called 2010. The BIC Easy Lighter, with its extended rod, is designed to allow the user a controlled flame at a safer distance. It helps to light fires at a more comfortable reach from any igniting accelerant, and helps to save burning your fingers on the already lit candles on the birthday cake. In light of this, <laughs> just a lighter joke. No? Okay. We're being commissioned to create a giant lighter from glass fibre, which will be sent up to King's Cross and decorated by a couple of artists on site, whilst the real size lighters are given away as free samples in the station. At a final confirmed height of 2.5 metres, at the moment only one cast is going to be made for the promo, but we'll also be creating a production mould for the client, so that there's the option of having more models produced in the future. The process here is going to be creating a master pattern, carved from polystyrene and finished in a plaster. But because this won't really be neat or accurate enough to use as a final master pattern, we're going to create a lightweight mould from glass fibre, create a fiberglass cast, finish this cast to a much higher standard for the client, and produce the more sturdy production mould from this finished piece. At first glance it seems like a very simple shape. But being blown up in scale, you soon realise all of the intricacies and details that need to be achieved in order to create an accurate interpretation of the product. As this is specifically for this model's promotion, we're not trying to create just a generic piece. For these to dry now. So the only downside to air dry plaster is the waiting time for drying. It's not much of a breeze today uh, so unfortunately it's going a little bit slower but it is nice and warm. Uh, so hopefully we won't have to wait too long, hopefully after lunch and then we'll be able to sand these down. Uh, they will eventually be one piece but for now we are doing them as two separates. The idea being that this it's going to be in two pieces of a mould and that is also going to be in two pieces of mould uh, rather than just joining them together and then trying to mould it um, it's just a little bit easier because we've got these indents here but also around the side we do have these uh, which can make it quite a trap as well as these um, we may end up having to make just a separate cap around the top because uh, obviously that will pull if we try and do that in half there and pull one way and another so chances are that actually maybe a three-piece mold and we've also got this piece of detail here uh, which once sanded will be a slightly indented circle and again that's the kind of thing it's not so bad if it's on the edge of the mold it's got a little bit of flex um, but something we will have to watch out for but yeah uh, the other thing to watch out for when we're molding this are these details. Um, we have rounded them so that should make things slightly easier. Uh, it is already a nice flat, we haven't had to compensate with that. We will just have to make sure that that's not poking in at a diagonal. We'll have to make sure maybe it's got a slight inward chamfer. Same for this bottom line here, uh, but obviously this one here is, is going to be the trick. Um, we may have to try and split it directly down the middle uh, because these two do act as a bit of a grip. Again, there's there's a degree of flexibility, so it should be fine. Uh, if not, it may be a case of taking them out and then re-sculpting them in later, or taking a silicon mold of just this area here and having that as a separate piece as well that we add in later. Not a problem, uh, but as with all things, you do need to think very carefully before going ahead <laughs> and just making sure you've got everything. This piece here is actually upside down at the moment. You're looking at the bottom. So that'll be flipped up the other way when they're joined. So yeah, but we're getting there. Here, we're making a lightweight fiberglass mould, which will only be used once, in order to produce the first cast. We've gone over the plaster with a PVA blue release agent, then a gel coat layer of resin, 
and a thin layer of glass fiber. Sometimes, with all the best will in the world, regardless of any amendments or release agents that we've added to make extraction from the mould easier, the master patterns, frankly, have a very difficult time of making it out in one piece. Not that this really matters, as the patterns aren't going to be used again, but this does actually allow for a good test run to see if any amendments need to be made to the first fiberglass cast before we produce the full production mould. After the mould has been cleaned out, we go in with numerous waxes and release agents before a gel coat of resin and glass fibre to create a first cast. From this first fiberglass model, we're making a few tweaks and changes to aid with future casting, and we're generally neatening and cleaning up the entire form. The production mould will produce a direct replication of whatever we're creating here, so we want to ensure that everything is finished properly. Plasticine is used to divide the sculpture surface into sections so that we can create multiple flanges to join them all together and open up again for extraction. After preparing the surface of the fiberglass, we paint the top section black and leave the bottom area clear with a white primer base coat, ready to receive the designs from the artists. We've created a wide base plate with a male spigot, which feeds up into a female tube inside the sculpture, and this will allow the piece to be more stable and freestanding. This is then sent out to King's Cross Station in London, whereby the partnership of husband and wife Rupert and Abbey form Rude Studio. Their bold designs are being tailored to the scale of the lighter, being painted live in the station, whilst the Bic lighters are being handed out to the general public. It's always been our mindset that 3D promotion is one of the most impactful ways to advertise. Nowadays, in the age of social media, large-scale pop art pieces like this are easily shareable to more than just the general public walking by. Having this as an interactive display with the artists painting live on location simply adds to the experience and we hope that we've helped contribute a little something extra for the commuters on the day. We'd like to thank our clients Claire from 2010 and Mark from Activate Live for coming to us and handling the project and to Rude Studio for finishing the piece in style. We always love hearing what you guys think of our projects and our channel so please feel free to drop a comment below and by all means subscribe and give us a follow on social media. 
A big thank you to all of our patrons who support our projects and the creation of our videos. We love having you guys on board. And if you'd like to support our family-run studio, you can find our Patreon details below. However big or small, it's greatly appreciated from all of us here at Sculpture Studios. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.